the bowl. Do, 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 do. There he is. Um, and now we need to start marking this guy with material IDs. So how do I want to break this guy down? I think our salt. These are all the same material. Well, we can kind of play it fast and loose. And in fact, if I do want to animate this thing where like the lid pops off or something, um, I'm going to keep those separate anyway, so I can just kind of fill those as needed. And all these things I'm going to keep separate for animation purposes. So let's just go in. Um, uh, how long it take me to make these insert brushes? Um, the military ones, not that long. Um, the ones I've been pulling from, like these brush insert model kit, these are all from Joseph Drust, I think. Or the, I've just been stealing from ZBrush. <laughs> uh, but I should be making my own brushes as I go. But that's, uh, I don't know, maybe later. Let's do some material IDs. Let's see here, so control shift. And then I got, let's see, color. So my fill object is control alt F. And then that'll be the same material. Let's go ahead and make this one the same too. And then this one was a separate material. So we'll just work our way around the color wheel here. <laughs> yeah, oh man, Warhammer. I uh I wanted to do uh oh. I need to get out of that brush. So when you're in Z modeler brush, sometimes it'll want to like Z model your million polygon mesh thing and crash Z brush, so be careful of that. Um I had a game called Battle Masters. I don't know if they that's still around or anything. But um I used to paint all the little figurines. I couldn't afford all the, um, I was trying to remember, the, there was a Warhammer that had all the cool little miniature figures you could go paint. That was really neat. Let's see here. I'm going to pull that back. Uh, anyway, so yeah, these things here, let's just do all those joints. Green here. And baby blue, we'll do all the little nuts and bolts. Ah, itchy feet. Okay, dark blue, we'll do his little girder. I wonder how, wonder what. Yeah, I went to, uh, I'm trying to remember, I guess it was South by Southwest, or maybe it was GDC, and they had um, a bunch of really, really cool miniature, like tons and tons of like little paintable, little arts and crafts thing. I wish I could do that stuff again. That stuff was fun. Not that I can, it's just, I won't. <laughs> <sighs> Gotta pick and choose my battles. Same thing with like sculpting in clay. It's like, oh man, I'd love to sculpt traditionally. Not in this lifetime, but maybe my next one. And once I move all the way back around, let's go to a gray here. I think I'm getting pretty close to done here. We'll do like the gray barrier here. And again, this might not even make much difference, but we'll do it just because it's part of the process here. And we'll do maybe a dark red. ones will do baby blue 
Uh, I have it assigned to a hotkey, so if you do Control Alt and tap Fill Object, it'll ask you what hotkey you want to assign, and I have it assigned to Alt Control F, which isn't the default one, obviously, but it's kind of up to you. You can make your own, whatever makes sense to you. Grab all these little knuckles in there. Almost got them all. Invert. Oh. Come on. Get rid of you. There we go. Yes. Whew. And then his feet. And then his little axle in there. We'll just make that orange. Why not? And then his little back tanker here. We could make that a different one, but I think probably just that. And then this thing back here, I guess can be its own color. We'll do a dark orange. Whoops. No problemo. Thanks for sitting through my color fill. Whew. Okay, so these can be just used as our material IDs here. Now I'm going to temporarily turn that off because I need to find out what part of these need to be subdivided because I had subdi dynamic subdiv turned on for a lot of the stuff. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab all those pieces here that need to be manually subdivided up because I'm just coming up with a bake file basically where everything needs to be high res. And all I need is like one little piece from the chunk, and then I can do Control Shift A. We can do a temporarily. Oh, let's grab that little handle in the back too. And you know what? Let's also grab this, this, all these little pieces here. Let's actually go Control Shift Alt, Control Shift Invert, Control Shift A, and then we'll do a quick split hidden. Solo mode here. Double check, make sure everything's pretty low res. Cool. Control D. Control D. Nice. And then merge those back down. Yeah, it's just a little bit easier. Now, the caveat to that is I used to bake OBJ to OBJ in Painter, and the material ID for the vertex color worked great. And then I started doing FBX to FBX, and it doesn't work so great anymore. Um, I think there's a way around it. But we'll we'll see. If not, it's not a huge deal. We'll we'll make do. That needs to be subdivided one more time. There we go. So now we've got our full res dude here. Just to play it safe, I'll save this one as BattleBot Salt Bake File. All right. So now we need to break break this guy up for animation. So all the pieces that are going to animate together. Oh, it's too cold. Um. We're going to select lastly here. So all these pieces right here are going to animate together. So I'm going to go ahead and split those off. And then he, we got this left. So let's go ahead and turn our eyeballs off here. Uh, oh, crap. Let's merge these back down. So he's symmetrical. I'm going to turn on X symmetry here. And all these pieces <laughs> that are going to pick together, split those off. And then uh, this elbow, when this elbow rotates, this will rotate with it, so we'll grab all these. And then the wrist rotates with the... Actually, you know what? I need to do this. It's bugging me. Okay. Um, so now when the wrist rotates, that I'll take the whole hand with it, but I kind of want that separate, so I'm just going to grab this wrist here and just go ahead and split that. And then these, um, for animation purposes, I could be mean and just bake it as a hand, and then they could just do a, a temporary thing, but we'll be nice. So we'll go here. Hmm. Still wondering if I should just quickly... We'll skip that for now. Okay, now this little lid, I might want it to just pop off altogether. That's why I'm going to go ahead and do that. Split that out. And then he'll have his body here. Uh, this will all be together. 
And now for his legs, uh, these things in the middle, I'm going to take all of these and put those together, I think. And then this thing here will be its own thing. And then the legs will be, so he turns his knee. Let's say these are separate. And then these, this and this can go together. And I mean, these can all be separate pieces. It's not a big deal. But when I dynamesh them together, um, I can decide then if I want to. I'm just kind of trying to simplify the file for baking. Um, and then these damn hands. Oh, robots. It would be so much easier if it was like a creature or like a tech suit or some armor. Ugh, robots get complicated. So let's say we want to do... Okay, that's so what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all these pinky, these little finger pieces here, split those, and we can just split up the stuff later. And actually, I'm going to put all these with them. We're going to split that, and then merge those down. So those will go with those. And then these will go together. And then these go together. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done robots, so this will be the first of many. Not a ton, but just let's say three. And we'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to get one out of the way here. If you go to my Sketchfab page, there's a couple that I've put on there, I think. that will kind of show you what we're going for here. So, We've got our little salt guy, and he's all split up here. So let's go through. This is going to be our high-res bake file. So let's go ahead and start renaming these things. Let's go into solo mode here. So we're going to rename this as move my phone out of the way. Arm high. And then we're going to call this. And then I'm doing uh, underscores in ZBrush by doing alt shift underscore and then we'll do body high axle high exciting part, I know. Especially when I misspell the damn thing three times. Mother. Almost done. it. Whew. So I'm going to export all of this as my high res bake file here. Actually, let me make sure underscore high is on all this stuff. That's very important. Underscore high. And it's spelled right. Looks good. C plugin. FBX export. Battlebot salt. We'll give it a whole new bake file. We'll name this one. I know you guys can't see this, but Put 
this go. So we basically did an FBX export visible. It's going to take it a second. Um, so when we go into Painter, um, FBX gives me a little bit more control over how Painter bakes. Basically, uh, because I named everything something underscore high, Painter's going to look at all of those unique names and go, oh, he called this one arm underscore high. Does he have a corresponding arm underscore low? If he does, then it's going to bake those separately so I don't get normal errors or normal, um, you know, where you kind of have normal maps being baked around each other and you start like getting projected normal maps from other surfaces on there. It'll bake them separately and then composite them all back together, which is really useful. Um, so now that that's done, and you'll see when we get into Painter what I mean, uh, but OBJs, you can't do that, so it's not as flexible. You can't just have it composite back down. Uh, and also, FBXs save out a bunch of individual things that you can take into Maya later on, which we're going to do in a second, and um, you'll see how it's organized. It's really nice. So now what we need to do is figure out for all of these things, if um, if you want to just like make a game res envelope of all these things, just go in here and do a quick Dynamesh. Uh, you don't even need the polypaint anymore. That's just material ID information. And then if you want to even like clean it up a little bit, you can go in here and be like, oh, you know, let's get rid of any ridges or anything you know is just going to be baked into the normal or H polish. And then we'll just go to Z plugin, decimation master preprocess current. And if you also even want to be even trickier, you could share, if the, you know these are going to be uh, mirrored, you could just bake one side and then uh, just mirror it over later so it won't take up as much texture space. Um, we'll be lazy tonight. So we'll preprocess current and we'll drop this down to like 4K. We'll decimate that. Let's just drop it down to 1K. We can go pretty low, I think. Yeah, let's do like one point. Point two five. There we go. And then for the forearm here, um, you know, we don't need the Dynamish stuff together, but again, let's just make it all one piece. And then we'll pre-process. Um, yes, FBX files save a bunch of stuff. So yeah, they can save animation data. I think even like cache, um, cache, cache for uh, particles and stuff too. I think, um, but I just use them just to kind of, it's almost like a multiple OBJ file. It'll also, when you go back and forth, it'll save creasing and polygroups and vertex color. When you go like from another program into ZBrush and back and forth, uh, FBX will hold that information. So we'll go 2K here. Looking good. And then we'll go like 0.5K. Oh, you know what? Oh, I guess that is all one piece. Let's Dynamesh this together, though, because it's got those things separate. Perfect. So, yeah, Dynamesh will get rid of all those little separated pieces here, make it all one nice envelope. And then we can just pre-process that. And now drop this down to, like, 1K. Nice. Body. Um, yeah, I get rid of that panel line. Ah, oh, do we not do the handle separately? I guess because it's not going to, I'm not actually going to animate that, so it's okay. Time project, not blur. Go and dynamish this. And again, if you know this is just going to be baked into the normal map, you can then go ahead and get um, Decimation Master to kind of ignore it if you just kind of smooth out any details you want it to ignore or any artifacting. And even if you want to like shave these and smooth these down, but um, I think those would be okay to keep there. Pre-process. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is the biggest piece we have in here. And I'll keep this at like 3K maybe. Yeah, perfect. Uh, axle. It's dynam you can also dynamesh these things a little lower and it'll pre process a little bit faster. Call this 2K. Good enough. Uh, 
throwing you a host. All right, all right. Drop this down to 1K here. And yeah, oh crap, it's already 11 o'clock. Ah! All right, I might have to cut it short. Dang it, I wanted to get through at least one robot tonight in a couple hours. I should be able to do that. I think the next robots I do will be a lot faster. Um, if I don't do them for the live stream, I'll record them. And you can just at least, least watch the same process kind of sped up. If that's interesting to y'all, you can go see it on my... Um, YouTube channel. Let's say pre process. And let's see, one point two five, let's do one point five K. And where'd my tool menu go? There it is. Almost done here. And let's see, pre-process, 1K for this little ankle bit, keep going down. And we'll go ahead and .5K for that one. And these ones should go pretty fast, project. Blur. Point two five. Ooh, that's a little low. Almost done. Let me get a good number dialed in for these, and I'll keep it for the rest of them. Mm, man, really. Boy, that finger is killing me. Let's see what's up with that. Um, so what I'm doing now is making a game res. So I'm merging everything and giving myself an envelope so we can just bake the normal information. Because I don't want to take a two million polygon mesh into Unreal. I want to do, you know, um, hopefully a much lower resolution mesh in Unreal, but I still want it to look good. So I'm just going to kind of decimate these things down so we can get a game res mesh going. We can just throw in. If these things would cooperate. Blur, Dynamesh, there we go. <laughs> you 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 can get you can get it in there into Unreal for sure. Um, might not move real fast, but you can you can definitely put it in there. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just dynamesh this stuff down too. Why not? You could, you could also do, um, if you don't want to do the game res process at all, you could do what I do in um, Octane or Keyshot. You can get the normal information from a single image. And uh, if you go to Christoph Desi, um, he has a YouTube channel. You go to his YouTube channel. He does a ton of that kind of, um, where he goes through and just does a high res image. And then you can take it through Painter or Substance Designer and texture just based on the normal information of an image. So it doesn't even, you don't have to go through this process. Um, I'm going through this process because it does need to be animated eventually. Um, but that's another alternative. You're just going for beauty shots. If I was just going for beauty shots, I would definitely either go the Christoph Desi route or I would go into Key Shot and then just render that out and then throw it out with some masks and then go into Painter or um, Photoshop. Almost done. Um, I won't go through the entire painter process tonight, but I do want to, while you guys are here, just kind of do a quick spin. 
do 0.5. Just at least get them in and get them baked, and then I'll probably head out since I've got to go to bed. Wait, pre-process current. Ah. Get caught up in my head, I could lose with track of where I am. Perfect. Okay, that's everything here. Let's go ahead and do another quick export. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. And my if I do get greedy on my game res, I usually end up regretting it and I'll have to go back through and collapse a bunch of edges. But um, sometimes it's a little bit nicer to bake to a higher, slightly higher resolution. Let me go into Maya real quick. Let me make sure you guys can see that. Give it a second. Um, so for like Hulk, you would do probably, I'm just guessing here, I don't do a lot of cinematic or movie res stuff, but uh, something called UDIMS or you basically have your high resolution mesh and you know the animators get what they get they'll get a lower res proxy to kind of you know do their muscle sims and kind of just do a little bit faster iteration um, but you would do like texture patches that are just super duper high res because you know they've got to go on IMAX and stuff but um, that would be a little bit different you could probably you'd probably use a lot of Mari for that you can check that out that's a pretty cool program that supports up to like 32K textures and PTEX stuff, so you can get really, really high resolution textures. Um, hold on, bots, battle bots, salt, bake, low. Okay, so here's our little dude. And um, first thing we're gonna do is hit one. Then we're gonna unlock his normals, set the face, soften at all of his edges here. Um, I think. Yeah, he kept poly groups, which I don't really need here. Hmm. Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, so basically, I need to change all of these here to low. And we need to UV him. Uh, there's probably a search and replace utility I have loaded, but I don't feel like looking for it. By the time I found it, I would be done just renaming these. When I was doing my commander, oh my gosh, I was living inside of Maya and Hedus. Um, Maya's new UV tools are pretty slick. I don't think I have the newest Maya downloaded on my home computer, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there was a ton of resolution on those things. I can't even imagine what they are now or if they've come up with some new tricks. I've been kind of out of the loop on the cinematic stuff. I used to have a passing interest in it. Well, I was um, kind of eyeballing some of their techniques that they would use. Um, UV editor here. Uh, you guys won't see this, but that's okay. It's just going to be boring stuff. Just give me a second here. So UV, I'm just going to do a quick auto UV here. And then I'm going to go into object mode by history for should erase that transformations. And then I'm just gonna do a quick UV layout. Actually it's probably gonna yell at me. Yeah, it has non-manifold edges. Well, boo-hoo, Maya. <sighs> Clean up. Clean up matching polygons. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, if you go to my R-Station page, um, while this is laying out and possibly crashing, yeah, I might be done for the night. Dang it. I go into a little bit. I didn't use UDIM, UDIMs on the, on the commander guy, but I probably should have. But I do a painter walkthrough on him. Um, on this, per yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, for the movie stuff, it's more about like, yeah, the UVs don't really matter. It's more about, um, 
making sure that uh, you just need resolution. So the UVs can be, you can just you can solve the problem in post. You can throw it on a supercomputer and have it render your frames. Whereas in real in games, it has to run real time. So it's a bunch of real time solutions. I talk a lot about this on the Pixel Logic channel too during game res discussions, and also on my channel, where it's like putting together the craziest puzzle because everything has to look really good, but you don't get any resources for it. So you have to be really tricky with like every vertice has to have some sort of purpose and you know, you can do all these tricks with like vertex color and rendering and uh, post and engine and all this crazy stuff you can do in games, um, which is interesting. That's why I like games. It's a lot of problem solving. Uh, so we got our UVs laid out here. I'm gonna do history free transformation. He's looking good. So I'm just gonna export him real quick. <laughs> That's awesome. I will say uh, what I always what I always uh, say is, man, lighting, materials, and then post makes everything look good. You could have a pretty mediocre model, like very mediocre. I synced it, but man, you yeah, you hand it off to the right animators and the right material artists and the right lighters and the right texture artists and have it like run through a scene with like smoke and particles and bullets being shot at it, it will look like the hottest shit you've ever seen. <sighs> Not so much in real time, but uh, <laughs> I can dare to dream. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we need to go into Painter. Real quick, we'll just bake our maps and then I'll head out. Since my wife's going to start yelling at me pretty soon. Go wake her up. Yes, uh, PBR is definitely, if you watch my GDC 2015 presentation on YouTube, I think GameSpot live streamed it, so I think it's still on their channel, but you can just Google it. And, um, oh, let me bring Painter up here. Uh, I know I got a Painter. Okay, maybe I don't. New window capture, p -p 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 Painter. There we go. Let me select my thing here. Um, characters, bots, salt, bake, low, 2048, direct X is fine, hit OK. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, Painter even has a couple baked options, um, or uh, you can bake in, oh, I, I have on my YouTube channel there's a Painter walkthrough where I talk a little bit about that stuff too. Um, I'm going to go over here to Bake Textures, and we're going to grab, we're going to bake them out at 2048, just because we're just kind of eyeballing it here. Um, we'll go into 6 padding, world space, let's go to normal map here. And we can tell the normal map to match with the mesh name. The ambient occlusion I would usually leave alone, but because these things are going to be moving parts around, I'll go ahead and say uh, uh, self-occlusion is going to be by the mesh name as well. The material ID, this is where it gets weird. Vertex color should work because our high res does have vertex color. Oh, you know what? I messed this up. Hold on. I need to assign. I'm going to go back into Maya. All I'm doing in Maya, I know you guys can't see this. I'm going to assign an existing, uh, no, a new material, and we'll just call it Lambert. And this Lambert I am going to name Battlebot Salt. Sorry, I need to re-export this as our low. Uh, because what it did was bring in a bunch of different materials that are uh, technically material IDs. So I'll just go to File, New, Select, Low, OK. Textures, and you guys might not be built. You guys can't even see that, can you? I'll bring this up just so you can see it here. Window capture, textures. There's a texture thing I'm talking about. Um, yes. Um, hi, Poly Decimate. Oh no, um, this is just for like preview purposes. If I'm just like iterating quickly, it's like I want to see what this guy animates like in game. So I'll do a quick model and like 
90 minutes and just get it into game so the animators can look at it and evaluate it with the silhouette and the materials in game. Um, the designers can see if that's what they need. If I'm doing real game res stuff, yeah, it's it's a headache. It's nasty. Um, and then, yeah, it's not, it's, well, I'll usually just find edges by angle normal and then split those apart because when you go to bake it, <laughs> it oh man, hard edge stuff is a is a bit of a nightmare, but yeah, it's not, it's diminishing returns. Like this thing will look pretty good, just totally crappy, decimated, whatever, thrown in the game. There's, there's definitely not a huge difference between the final product if I keep it similar to this and uh, what we're going to get anyways. But um, let me see real quick. Hi, hi, Polly. Uh, world ID. Oh yeah, that's the thing I was talking about. So like normal map, we'll do match by mesh name, ambient occlusion. We'll do mesh by mesh name. And then the ID, I don't think it's going to do vertex color for some reason. We'll try mesh ID. I don't even know. We'll give that a shot and we'll just tell you get a huge shift. It's not a huge deal if it doesn't get it right, but it'll help us out. So with all this stuff, we'll hit bake battle bot salt textures and just let that run. Yeah, this is just a throwaway. Like if, you know, this is this would be something I'm going to hand off to animators just to get into the game and they can do a quick, um, I mean, I could do it too, but I just don't have the rig. So I'm going to let them kind of just copy weights real quick. And I, I, if I was doing it to a certain proportion and a certain model that needed, that it was already set up, I would definitely stick to their proportions. But this is just kind of a, just stick it in game, see how he looks, if he fits. Um, and then we can just start iterating from there. And again, we're just talking like an hour model. This one took me a little bit longer than it should have, but once I start building my library of meshes I can pull from, um, it'll go a lot faster. I'll just end up just baking, you know, the individual pieces. And then even in the texturing side, once I get to a certain point, I'll be able to just really just drag and drop smart materials on him and then stamp some stuff on him and call him a day. So I'll be able to get a robot done in like, an entire robot done in like an hour. Um, let me get rid of this window here. Yeah, exactly. And it's not fun. Um. <laughs> I know. I felt like garbage. You have no idea. Because normally, I, I mean, I do like enjoy doing this kind of stuff, but I like to s keep it snappy if I can. Um, sometimes Painter will freeze and it, like you won't be able to rotate. Just hit F and it'll go out of that mode. So here's our robot. He's all baked out. He's got super crappy UVs. If you want to see his UVs, we can just go to... 2D only. There's a super crappy UVs, but you know what? Just it's just a proxy. Here's another cool thing too about Painter is you can do all your smart materials. You can do everything you would normally do. Let's see what this uh, this map ended up looking like. By the way, I drew a fill layer here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day, just because I know I'm gonna yell that. But um, let's see what this ended up baking for us. Okay, yeah, that worked ish and eh, didn't quite do everything I wanted but I'll figure that out later um, but you can see it's pretty clean bake I'm gonna and once you've textured this thing and you've gone through the thing and you've gone and you want to go back and redo the gamers redo the UVs you will not lose anything on your painter file even if you paint stuff it's recording the direction and where you're painting so as long as you don't change the size of the object or the location you can bring in all you got to do is go up here to edit uh, oh, it's not showing any menus. Are you kidding me? I go to edit project configuration and then just do mesh select. Select your new mesh. It'll bring it into Painter. It'll rerun all of your smart material operations, all the mesh stuff that you have in there. It'll redrop everything. It'll redrop all your, um, your brush strokes and you won't have lost anything. You will get all the stuff you've painted up this far on your new mesh, on your new UVs, and you're golden. So... <laughs> that is awesome nice so anyway uh he should be pretty quick to to texture i'll do that next time um i'm going to be changing up my schedule a little bit i'm probably going to be going to mornings uh but i think this month i'm still going to stay late i had to drop in an hour late tonight and i'm kind of behind right now so if i had my full three we'd have this guy all textured and stuff um while we're here let me just do save as and I'll bring in another guy. Streaming uh, characters, bots, salts, paint.
Enter. Let me see if I've got one in here. It's just like a little quick. He's a little bit older version. And this I think is like from a like a World War Z. So if we go over here to viewer settings, we'll turn on shadows. We'll go down here to our shader parameters and we'll call this high. And we can also take this in the eye ray. So this is like a World War Z or I'm not World War Z. World War robots type dude here. So he's kind of just he's got kind of rust on him. And uh, boy, he is really. Oh, I put him in orthographic because I was painting on him. There we go. So you can kind of see him in here. If we want to do a quick eye ray render, let's go ahead and shoot him in there and let's see if it kills. Ah, oh, we can do it. So let's go over here to our dome here. And this is the kind of stuff you do just as like the smoke and mirrors type thing. Again, art director approval. So you throw it in like a cool environment. You and this is you know I don't even have to go into Keyshot or Octane or Redshift or any of that stuff, or even Marmoset. It's just a really quick just throw it into I right here, and it's kind of chugging. Number one, because I'm on an old laptop, and number two, I'm streaming, so it might be kind of chugging him a little bit here. But we can go in here. We can change. Um, the, let's let's give him a glossy bottom. really crank that up here. Put them on like a mirrored surface. But this is kind of what we would end up doing. And in fact, I can make a smart material out of this guy and then drag it onto my guy and just replace some of the stuff and he would be pretty much done in a couple minutes. But I am really going to be in trouble. So I'm going to... Uh, we can also bring our environment back and we could say, you know what? Let's say we're in Bonifacio Street. Whatever that is, and you can hold down shift and right click and you can just move. Of course, on this thing we wouldn't have a very <laughs> mirrored bottom here, but you can do all sorts of cool stuff in here. Really cool. You can put them in a garage, glazed patio, bus garage. They look right at home in a bus garage. So anyway. Um yes, I will have my oh, let me let me let me link you to that real quick. Good point. So my video on demands and what I like to do is tomorrow morning I'll go through and do like chunks so that I it's a little bit more organized. But if you go here, um if you go there, there's a Twitch TV Pav Mike playlist here. And that's like a whole bunch of hours here. And if you want also I have the streaming I do for Pixel Logic is all here as well. So you can go to their, their channel and I'm doing like a sci-fi female for them, but I go over tons and tons of ZBrush stuff. So <laughs> thanks everybody for showing up and um, thanks for having me. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Bal, Balcar, Balcaris, Bal, Balsaceris. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so hopefully we'll have this guy. Uh, let me see what you guys are looking at. Yeah, so we'll do the texturing next time. And um, I will catch you all on the flip side.